Okay, and as we get set up, our next speaker is going to be Carl WF6J, and he's going to be talking about VHF antennas. This uh, presentation of everything you always want to know about the Yagi in under 15 minutes. Well, it's not going to be that. Uh, basically, in August, what we're going to do is we're going to build an antenna. And this is the antenna. Uh, it's a PVC three element, two meter beam. And uh, the last two pages of the article is the PDF from QST. And it says how to build this thing. Uh, you could pass it around unless you feel you could endanger your neighbors by skewing them. But, uh, uh, basically what uh, the construction is, is PVC and welding rod. And it's pretty easy to put together. You, got, you have the one T and you cut two 18 inch long PVC pieces. And you cut uh, five pieces of the welding rods, and this is what you get. Uh, the project is simple. It uh, came out a long time ago. It was in the April 1993 QST, and the first person in here to have one of these was our own Alan, KA6WDV. And I did a video of Alan uh, doing a Tech for 10 at the library. And it is on the uh, W60K YouTube channel. So you can take a look at that. And the link is below there. And this will get posted on the website so that you can just click on the link. Uh, so basically, I reviewed about where, how the Yagi came about. We had the two Japanese guys. Uh, I always mispronounce his name. Hidetsuku Yagi and his partner, Shintao Yuda, which is why it's the Yagi Yuda combination name. So anyway, there's many variations in it. You can have them for HF, you have them for VHF, UHF, etc. They've become very popular, and as you know, I'm a two meter weak signal guy, so I'm not really into three element uh, antennas. This is made out of brass, and it's similar to the uh, the one that we're talking about here, and it's a clear lucite uh, square boom. Uh, you, in any Yagi antenna, you have each each element has to be resonant at the frequency, and the spacing and how it is made, it has a uh, a formula in fractions of the wavelength. When people first started making Yagis, like Kushcraft, they used to space. You'd have the you'd have the uh, uh, you'd have the rear element, the driven element, and then all of the other elements in front of it. All the directors were slightly smaller on each one, but they were all spaced exactly the same. And as we got smarter and we got computers and people pulled around a little bit, we found out that it was really the length of the boom in wavelengths that determined the gain not the number of elements. And then they started playing around with uh, spacing the elements further apart as they got to the end of the beam. And it helped a lot and it brought the gain up. So you could get almost about 2 dB more gain than you could with the elements all lined up with each other. Now the long Yagi versus this. This is uh, that particular one. Let me get it. This can be used uh, portable, this can be used horizontal for sideband and vertical for FM. And the, the yes, thank you very much. The back element was taped together because I'll show you here. It's uh, two pieces, 20 inches a piece, with a brass sleeve tube, and it was stuck in the sleeve tube. And apparently the uh, the painter's tape didn't hold. So I'll change my topic to the two elements, <laughs> and we'll see what happens here. Put that up there for just a second. Actually.
actually uh, what happens with uh, either this uh, J type or this uh, uh, dipole type. Uh, you're within 60 to 70 ohms at the uh, center, so you can solder the coax directly to it, and it's close enough on a three element that it works pretty well. Uh, this is the same thing, the longer element here, a 0.15 lambda spacing to the driven element. Carl. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yay, Greg. You're going to yay, 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 Greg. Okay, so he gave me some type of technology here. All right, 7 dB for 7 bucks. Silence. There we go. We're going to talk about the antenna falls apart, and we have, and the article in QST was Nathan's WV0 CMTs, and about Alan who built the uh, unit. That's a picture of it with all three elements in place, <laughs> and uh, uh, well, we went over the when it was uh, uh, invented by the gentleman in Japan. Now, I have boom connection and matching. Uh, the boom can be conductive or non-conductive. Uh, if it's non-conductive, that's a little easier to figure out spacing and things. If it's conductive, then you have to look at how you're connecting the elements to the conductive boom. Some people screw them in, and my preferred method, which I don't have to show you, is to drill a hole right through the middle and put rubber grommets put it through, insulate it, and then put keepers that look like star washers uh, to hold the element in place. And what it does is it cuts down on, uh, well, it changes the length of the element. And the elements, basically, if you're using rod on two meters, that's pretty good. If you're using eighth inch, perhaps, or welding tubing, that's also pretty good. And the element length gets a little longer with the thinner than the thicker. If you go to, uh, uh, I have everything taped down tonight. There you go. You can you can handle this around. Shall I spear you with that? Uh, this is this is some stuff that you can buy at uh, Blue Blue Collar. Blue Collar Working. Thank you. Blue Collar. And what's good about it is that uh, it's easy to cut. It's aluminum, and you can get 12 feet of it for five bucks. So it's it's uh, my preference for building antennas. Second to that is the uh, not this, but uh, this material, which is brass, and you buy this at the hobby shop. And it makes very good elements. And then what this project is doing is the. Uh, the tube. I'll hand that around. This is welding tube. Uh, it's about 15 bucks. I'm sorry, what? He just pointed and said something. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is welding tube, and you can get a lot. You can make three antennas out of one uh, $15 set of welding tube. All right, so then matching. Uh, the type of matching, this is the J. This makes a J. And that's a, a J type. In the um, project that we're going to build, they're just stuck through the boom, but they represent a dipole, like you just uh, learned about with a pitch dipole. That's going to sail. <laughs> And then you have uh, various other matches. Uh, the delta match, the gamma match, a T match, and a hairpin match. And I'm actually going to show you, in, when we build this, we're going to put a little hairpin match on here, which makes it uh, closer to 50 ohms. Gives you another quarter to a half dB. Um, gamma, T, hairpin, delta, and balance. So, uh, not to get too techy here, this will just be really short. Uh, 
on this three element beam, whether it's this configuration or the one that we're going to build, how you determine that is that you basically have about uh, one and a half or two dB over an isotropic radiator for the uh, driven element. The reflector gets you another two dB, the director three dB. So you total them up and you're going to get six and a half to seven dB out of three element antenna. Uh, then we started to talk about placement. Uh, there's several schools and there's two guys who are one in Europe and one over here who have their own uh, kind of formula for making Yaggies, but it's for long Yaggies. So if you're only making short ones like this, um, using the uh, 0.15 wavelength and 0.45 wavelength on a 40 inch boom uh, for this antenna that is the QSD one. And this is just about parts, cutting them up. Uh, it's in the article how to do that. You need a drill, a hacksaw, and a soldering iron. And some solder and some flops to go with it. And this is more about the calculations, and you can read that in the notes. Uh, basically, the thing is saying that uh, we'll use the old course of the Bible for the frequency in megahertz to calculate how big the uh, driven element is going to be and 5% longer for the reflector and 5% shorter for the driven element. And then uh, I have space 21 inches from the driven element. And the reason I have that down is that the uh, diagram is wrong in the QST article. So uh, it's hard to figure it out. So now we're going into big Yaggies. This would be an 11 element or larger Yagi. And what we have is, uh, we get a nice long Yagi and then they get to be too big and they get to be too focused. Uh, very, very narrow band. So if I'm trying to talk to you, I won't be able to hear you and you don't want that to happen. So what people do is they kind of keep them short, maybe 11 elements, maybe 15 elements, and you start stacking. So if you double the number of elements and directors, you're up to uh, 3 dB more. And if you do that again and make the H uh, frame like we have here, I'm going to walk up to this. This is antenna 1, 2, 3, and 4. And you have a matching network of coax basically figured out for uh, the degrees so that everybody gets a signal at the same phase. And uh, put that together, and if you start out with an 11 element beam, that basically is going to give you about 16 dB, and you can add in more with that, you can get a very powerful unit working for you. Okay, polarization, as we all know, vertical is for FM, horizontal for sideband. And then there also is circular, where you have two dipoles, uh, and they're also on the boom, they're 90 degree electrically phased apart from each other. And you've got it set up so that you can get clockwise and counterclockwise uh, circulation of the pattern of the beam. Very good point to point if you have somebody else that has one, and also, uh, used to be used exclusively for satellite work. So here's the references which are also on there and it'll be up on the website. And they give you all the different places to go and find uh, information about building Yaggies from the simple three element all the way up to uh, four, or 44 elements. So the big question is, we're going to try to build these. And uh, we have a sign-up sheet. Uh, we'll need to create one. Oh, well, we'll make a sign-up sheet, or if I can just get a show of hands. Anybody interested in building the three element at the next meeting? We're going to bring the parts and all that stuff. So we've got three, four people. And uh, I'll build one for myself again. 
and a couple other people. So uh, try to kit up something in the neighborhood of uh, 10 antennas, something like that. And the uh, other guys who are falling asleep here listening to the same stuff over and over again. Uh, you know, I, I tried to make it funny with the element falling off. <laughs> I couldn't think of another thing to do after that. It worked. It worked. That's good. So, any questions? If you uh, stack the Aggies, what's the separation standard? Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> you have to look at my hand drawing. Here's the Aggie, and the field around it is kind of like an ellipse and you can calculate exactly what it is. So when you put another one above it, you want the ellipses just to touch. Now, if you're stacking, say, two meters and six meters, you don't need to worry about that. There's some effect, but it's only when you're doing them and feeding them in phase. And uh, it's the ellipses, and you don't have them touch vertically or horizontally. Uh, most of the people like M squared, and directive systems, they sell stacking kits. They give you the H-frame and all the coax cut to the right size. Somebody else raised their hand? They're itching. Yes? Uh, a comment, um, I have one of those antennas that Carl built many years ago and using it on two meter sideband, I've got 200 miles with it with 50 watts. So they work. Now, Bob, do you still have the rear element? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> okay. He's upgraded tape. <laughs> All right, that's good. Upgraded tape. Good glue. Yeah. Any other questions? Anybody else change their mind about what they want to do on a bill at next meeting? Okay, don't see any. So. Uh, look on the website, all this stuff will be on there, and uh, read the article. If there wasn't enough to hand out to everybody, uh, just let me know and I can send you one. I have it in a PDF form. So that's it for a failure in the again. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody wants to sign up to see me, I'll put your name on the list.